All right, this video introduces you to a new media that you might not have played with, um, PCL plastic, okay? If you haven't had a chance to play with this plastic, you should. If like super glue and Sculpty had a baby, it would be PCL plastic. Uh, it has the sculpting power of Sculpty where you don't have to bake it. All right, you can also intermix so many things with PCL. So for instance, I could take PCL plastic and then introduce gold leaf powder into it. I could take and introduce graphite to it. Like this powder here. So I can get different looks for it. Um, it's very flexible and you can just freehand sculpt it no problem whatsoever. You can also grow or it's you can make it so it's conductive so you can grow metal on top of plastic. This makes a very light piece of whatever you're looking at because it's not solid copper. Uh, for cosplay people, um, you might know this plastic to be like Warbla or Warbla Pie. So Warbla Pie is the homebrew version of it, which is what I'm introducing kind of here. Um, but I'm going to give you another video just in the link below to show you how to mix it. Um, there's, there's a guy on the internet that actually does a pretty good job of showing you. It's just four, four to one in the oven, four to one ratio. So, you can intermix it with all kinds of crazy stuff, but today's intention is to actually show that there's kind of two communities out there. There's an electroforming community that can turn surfaces into copper, um, and then there's a cosplay community out there, and the cosplay community makes this amazing armor, but it's, it's completely out of plastic. So what if you can grow metal on a plastic surface, okay? Very easy. You just have to have a special paint that will bind into the plastic. And I'll be introducing you to that here in a little bit. So I'm gonna just kind of do a demo here. Here's a solid chunk of PCL. This PCL is mixed with buckwheat flour. And this is graphite. This is on a hot plate right now. So it's ready to sculpt and I can just work with the media just like I would Sculpty. And whatever surfaces that I put it on, it would harden just like that. Okay, so if I have something that I'm sculpting on and I need a piece, I'll give you an example here. So I'm doing this sculpt of a skull. Um, I got some engraving here, but I have these pieces. This is not yet fully, this is just the plastic. So I haven't grown any copper on it yet. But these surfaces here were all plastic at one point. And if I needed a piece, to interact with the surface, I would just simply mold it to the piece. And let it harden. And I can make any shape I want. And once it's hardened, it'll take that shape. All the indents and everything else. So now I can use this piece to grow a piece of armor for this piece of artwork. It's got a million other applications, but um, that's it's pretty nice to be able to do that. Okay, we used to use I used to use Sculpty, so Sculpty, uh, really great. You can make a form around this, but then you'd have to get it off and then bake it in the oven, and by the time you put it back on, it would change shape. As you can see, this is already hard.
it's hardening up by the second. Now you can also work with tools with this. Um, a pasta machine works really good with this. I just took the guards off of it, so that'll allow you to make really flat pieces. Um, I can mold it to different surfaces by heating it up uh, using a Wagner. And you can use any one, but this one's really nice because it has the ability to go all kinds of different temperatures. You can introduce, since copper can be intermixed with it, I can make forms for electroforming. So I can grow copper on these pieces of wire and then I could paint fluid in these areas to blend the wire into this. So now I have the spring loadedness of this plastic to build a crown, okay? Um, and it looks like copper. The plastic looks like this. Comes in a bag. You can buy it by the pound. Very easy to mix. Besides a pasta maker, uh, I use a spatula that's I sharpened out of bamboo. It's a bamboo utensil. It holds an edge rather well. And this piece that was hard is now ready to sculpt or run through the pasta machine or interact with something. So let me show you uh, in the next part, you know, like how would I get a piece that like this, how would I grow copper on the surface? Okay, so here's a paint that is formulated for use on organics or plastics, okay? So I will talk about this paint in a video below. Just look for uh, electroforming or conductive paint video, okay? So if you're interested in this workflow, uh, just look at that video. But here's a piece of that PCL plastic. I'm just gonna paint this. It goes on very fluidly. And I'll show you two different ways you can use this, especially for cosplay people. And people that are just interested in a new sculpting media, that rocks. Again, by mixing graphite in with this, it automatically becomes conductive, but, um, yeah, that becomes kind of expensive, so it's, I found cheaper to mix it with buckwheat flour, the plastic. And this paint really absorbs into it well, but it doesn't matter if it's made with cornstarch or buckwheat flour, just buckwheat, buckwheat flour is very thin or uh, not coarse. The grains are very tight and it adds a, a pretty good strength to it. Cornstarch also works rather well and it has a smoother surface to it. But this stuff is gonna bite into it anyway, so I don't see the point. It's actually easier to mix it with uh, the buckwheat plow. So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm handling this real time and painting it, so it's drying very quickly. I will let it completely dry for about five minutes, so I'll be back. Um, with this paint, keep the lid on. All right, so now you can go two ways. One, you could go the route of, hey, I want this to look like steel or iron, okay? And you could take zero, 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 um, fine steel wool and since this is already really bonded with the plastic all you're doing is 
rubbing off the, uh, the excess graphite, I would say. Uh, so let's just say there's a lot of graphite on this. And you're left with this really metal looking stuff. It's a very irony looking texture. So that in itself looks like armor. So if you want to go the extra route and grow a metal on the surface, you can because it's graphite. It's now conductive. So all you need is an electric warming tank. Again, below is uh, a link to one of the videos I started out making electric warming tanks and liquid and all that good stuff. And then you can grow copper on your warb, uh, this plastic in the cosplay community is called warbolo or warbolo pot. So, it does float a little bit. You just have to kind of coax it down. And then the end, um, I'll show you a piece that's already electroformed. And you can also see that I have other things that are growing in the tank right now. So you can do organics. So I could hand polish the pieces, but I tumble them in ceramic. Ceramic, let me shine, and Dawn dish soap. Another way you can do this is you can just add brightener to your electric warming mix and you would have to skip this process. But since these aren't very complex, um, tumbling is just a little bit faster. Not faster, but yeah, less complicated, I would say. So I'll put a patina on this and show you what it looks like. All right, the electroform piece. Gets dipped into a liver of sulfur mix. And sometimes you have to do this twice one to actually get it to bite in. And you can kind of see it starting to change color. Um, you'll also notice that anywhere that the steel from these tweezers have touched. It interacts with the surface. Yeah. Cool. So we can actually make patterns that way. Um, another way you can get it to uh, speed along is just rubbing a piece and letting the iron filings jump down on it. Steel wool. So the steel wool actually interacts with this and starts darkening it up.
iron oxide. And then I'll put in an old food dehydrator. You use a hair dryer. And I'll just let that set. Since it's PCL plastic, I turn the food dehydrator down quite a bit. This is an extra step, you don't have to do this. It just speeds the process along. Ideally what I want is a very aged looking metal, not really shiny C3PO copper. So I more want this type of look here, where it's got bits of green in there, some dark areas. You know, that aged copper look, and then keep the rivets nice and bright. All right, we'll look at that in here in a second. Okay, so here it is out of the dehydrator. As you can see, it looks really ancient, old, and what I need to do now is just touch it up with um, some steel wool so that it has highlight areas. I love the look of this. It looks, yeah, it's got a really ancient, dug out of the ground look. That's what I want. So I'll just lightly go over this. Steel wool, just to highlight some of the areas. Nice. Right. Practical application. I don't know how it went on there. That slips onto the horn. This was uh, a trial one I was looking at, maybe this one on the other. But yeah. Completely out of plastic with metal on the top. No, no 3D printer needed. Sweet, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, for cosplay people, I would say this has endless amounts of uses. You just, your imagination, once introduced to the fact that you can grow metal on plastic, you you couldn't even fathom on how many things you could actually create uh, using that. And it, it just starts with copper. There's actually, you can go zinc right on top of copper to get that steel look if you wanted to. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed the video. For those that are interested in Warblow PCL, and I think also Warblow Pie would be another term um, for this type of cosplay plastic that's on the market right now. But really, check out the link below. Um, you can actually make the plastic yourself, the PCL intermixed with cornstarch, wheat flour, graphite, or um, any kind of powder substance to cut it four to one very easy in your oven or conventional toaster oven all right have a good one